Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of uh, Arganian's Puzzle Box. In this tutorial we will be making this globe-like uh, shape and it will basically be a, like a holographic sort of um, effect as you can see. I've actually found this um, uh, interesting design on Facebook um, in one of the groups, one of the Blender groups, so I've thought about just putting this into practice and putting a tutorial together for it. So I hope you guys enjoy and learn something today. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you do, and let's begin. So first things first, you want to go onto the Blender website and you need to go over to the Builds uh, tab and download Blender 3.0. This does not work in any other Blender version apart from 3.0 because it has some new nodes added to geometry nodes which we will be extensively using to get this project done. Now, over into Blender, as you can see, it's version uh, 3.0. We're going to delete our camera and our light, and we have this cube that we're going to keep. We can put it to one side, that's fine. And then in the center of the world, we're going to add a new UV sphere. One thing to also do is go into Object and then Shade Smooth, so we have a nice transition over on it. After this is done, we can start creating the material for our globe, which I will just name, you know, just leave it as material. You don't need to name it anything else. Just leave it like that for simplicity's sake. Okay, so first thing, let's split this screen into two. We have our sphere selected and we created the material. Now we're going to go into our shader editor and we don't actually need a principal BSDF for this. Uh, what we do need is we need some, um, you know, we need a geometry node and this is to basically um, determine where the position is of the material that we're going to apply. We then want a mapping node as well. Uh, we want a texture coordinate node as well. Uh, let me just try and get that for some reason. I'm not able to, there it is, texture coordinates, uh, because we're going to use the, the position, sorry, the um, uh, UV uh, of our sphere as well. Uh, then what we want to do is bring in a vector math node to combine these two nodes together. So we put the mapping into this slot and then we're going to put the UV in this other slot. And then we change this to dot product. Um, this is to do with this, so with this is the material of how it's going to create a mask basically for light and darkness. Uh, then we want to add a math node in which we're going to multiply some of these values that we're putting from, the, uh, from this vector. Uh, we're going to switch this to multiply add and then connect the value to the surface. Now, if we switch over to the shaded view, nothing really happens at this point, which is fine. We can, we'll tweak some of these settings later on. But uh, to begin with, let's just connect the position as well to the vector over here. And now you can see that we've got, this is the sort of the mask that we're creating. If you actually change these values, you can rotate around. Normally what I would do is I would just change the uh, Z value, which sort of follows how the world, you know, how the how Earth's uh, sort of surface would sort of be um, blackened out by the, by, by the, you know, by the sun moving around it as well. Okay, so that sort of concludes the material setup for this, so it's not a very complicated thing to do. Uh, now we want to go into our geometry nodes and set that up as well. And now switch over here to the geometry node editor. Now we don't have anything yet because we haven't yet added a geometry. We can add one and we can rename this to whatever we want, but we're just going to keep it that way. Now this is the input and the output. So in the mid in the middle here, we're going to add all of our settings. Now I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so we can have more um, you know real estate here to work with. The first thing we want to do is add a subdivision um, surface uh, node, and this is so we can. Um, basically multiply the amount of geometry we want to transform the sphere into. So we're going to impose the cube on top of the sphere um, using these nodes here. So we've got the subdivision. Then what we want to do is add an attribute uh, sample texture. And we don't really have a texture yet. So we've got to go in here and create a new texture, open an image. So this image I have provided in the description below that you can download, which is an earth black and white texture. Uh, with that done, we can actually select it over here. So now we've got this set up. Uh, you want the mapping to look at the UV uh, map of our 
um, so of our shape. So that's why we typed in the UV map. And then as a result, you can type in whatever you want in here, but just make sure it's consistent throughout the whole process because we're going to look at this value that we're putting in here throughout this whole chain for the geomet geometry nodes. So we're gonna call this maybe global. Um, okay, so that's done in that respect. Now, now we can add an attribute. Um, let me just type this in, color ramp, uh, which again, we're going to start now connecting these. So the uh, this, this part, this um, sample texture goes into the geometry. The subdivision goes into the geometry of attribute sample texture. And over here on the attribute, we've got to add the global that we've uh, we created. So again, you could probably use one letter word in this particular event, but yeah, you want to put the global information in there. I'm just going to play with the color ramp, bring it to about this value here. Uh, now what we want to do is add the new geometry node, which is the delete geometry. And we want to connect this as well. In the selection here, we type in global again. Uh, then with this, I'm going to just push this to a side. Uh, with this delete geometry, which by the way, you don't have any of the other version of Blender. This is the only version that actually has this. Uh, now you want to add a point scale um, option and you want to change from vector to float. So we have one value only. Now this is going to determine the scale of the object that we're spreading across here. So we may want to make this maybe, to, you know, this value very small. So we connect the delete geometry over here. And now we want to add a point instance, which is going to actually add the object that we're trying to bring in. So connecting that over there, we can pick the cube. And then we have a material assign node that we need to add. Now this is going to look at the material that we created earlier, which is material 0001, I think. Let me just go back and check. Yeah, that's the one. So that's the one we want to select here. And then uh, we leave the selection as is. And then this connects over here. Now, the moment we uh, pretty much put this group input into our geometry, and then obviously connect these two here, then we should be able to see a result. Um, so I've connected all of that together and okay, nothing happens. So we've got to see why, you know, nothing is actually being referenced over here. Um, so some things that could, um, could have happened, for example, is the settings that we've played around with into our material or here. Actually, I think I know what I'm missing. Uh, I need a transform node as well. So adding this transform and being able to play with some of these values should give us the result that we want. So let's just try something like that. So add the transform, play around with the settings, but uh, I've actually looked over here. It's the mapping that we did wrong. We shouldn't just type in UV map. We've actually got to select the face corner UV map. And there we go. So what's happening right now is the texture that we've applied over here is now telling our geometry nodes where to apply the cube that we're obviously instancing. So with the subdivision level, we control how many of these show up. So this is how many we've actually got. Now this looks quite nice already. Uh, what we want to do now is switch over to our shader editor because there's some settings that we need to do in here in order to get a better result. So one thing to do is, for example, you know, start increasing these values, like uh, maybe yeah, do about 10 over there. And then as you increase this value, uh, actually nothing will happen because this is sort of like this This is what gives it the, that white look sort of thing. So at this point, you may want to add an emission, uh, um, you know, over here between the uh, multiply add and the surface to with an add shader. Or you can go over here, by the way, and add bloom. So this makes the entire mesh, um, you know, pretty much shine like this. Well, uh, well, the bloom effect really. So as you play around with these settings, like for example, this add end option, you can see that it makes it uh, shine even more. So at this point, we want to bring in that dark sort of side of the, you know, of the of the texture back into, into here as well. So in order to achieve that, I think I'm just gonna change the texture corner from UV to window. Yeah, there we go. So now we have this sort of blackened area over here. And now as we rotate, you can see what this is doing. 
Now, as you can see, it's not actually hitting all the, the polar ends um, of that. So at that point, you know, this is obviously going to rotate that mask, uh, but you most likely will need to scale. It seems on the, is it y, the Y axis? No, it's the X axis. So it was one, you probably want to scale it up to about five. So let's have a look. And now as we rotate, yeah, there we go. Uh, it's not perfect still, but you can play around with these settings. And as you can see what we're sort of getting, putting that back to one, this looks more normal. But yeah, we're not hitting the poles specifically, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I think, I don't, I, I'm not sure exactly which of these settings I need to play with. Maybe it's this one, but it is skewing it off a bit. So yeah, it's just about really playing around with the settings until you get the right result, cover the poles properly. I mean, it's almost doing it right now. So yeah, so it's a minus 0 0.6 maybe, somewhere around there. So yeah, the poles are almost covered properly now at this point. Uh, but not really in the, not really in the <laughs> north and south. Yeah, okay. But that's the, really the effect that we're getting as you can see this is this is what we were doing earlier um, we have this holographic thing now one thing that we can also do is we can go into our geometry nodes and are able to actually increase the subdivision levels if we wanted to so let's say we want the subdivision levels to be at four which just will add more cubes to this uh, which in essence could make it look better if that's what you're going for and then this just uh, sort of determines the um, uh, well, sorry, that's sort of broken. Uh, it's, it works very slow because of the subdivision level. So if we t t put that to one, you can sort of see what's going on. It's just how how well the mask, sorry, the texture is being read um, when you're you know using a color ramp. That's how sort of you know where these cubes are going to show up based on how uh, the threshold between the black and the white area is done. And you can also change the factor to make these, for example. Uh, bigger so now they're bigger uh, 0 0.004 so as you can see you can make them quite big as well the cubes so that looks a bit different now you can obviously combine more sizes here if you wanted to so you, maybe you want to have lines that are uh, larger or i've seen um, you know some effects where you can have smaller cubes around the edges and bigger cubes towards the center so that could be also an idea uh, but yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something. Please let me know if you have any sort of other um, you know, ideas of what can be done with this. Um, I'm really glad that I did this tutorial because I found it very interesting what I saw on, on, as I said, on Facebook on Blender. Um, I will try to link back to the original creator of this if I can find that post again. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my, new, in my next video.